All right, guys. Uh, what's going on? Bangle again here. Joined by Wheels. Hello. And you will get used to seeing that. As this is the first episode of what is now going to be called the Seventh Round Bust Podcast. It's name Wheels came up with, and I think it's kind of funny. Yeah, I mean, it's like, you know, it's football related, but it's like, oh, seventh round bust. Like, <laughs> what does that even mean? So Yeah, right. So it's like, you know, a bust, you guys know, obviously. Uh, someone that gets taken high usually and doesn't pan out. We like we barely get drafted, but we also still don't even work out at all. <laughs> so I mean, there's no bust in the seventh round. I made a video all about bust that I'm like, yeah, I'm like, come on, there's no like <laughs> third round bust. And, but you know, uh, there are players that like fizzle out or whatever. But uh, when I was doing the Cover Two podcast with Swami, I got to pay homage to that to start things off. Like I don't know, I could never really get comfortable. Like I, I'm friends with Swami, obviously. Like we're we're more so than just like we know each other on YouTube and we. We've talked once or twice, and when we did the podcast, like we're friends, right? But uh, when we were doing that, I felt like I was trying to be like too professional almost, and I didn't really crack wise that often. I don't know why I talk like a ninety-year-old, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I never cracked wise. <laughs> anyway, I never really like made jokes, or I never really got ranty or whatever. Uh, so I think that's going to be a little bit more of a. Uh, of that that you're gonna see in this podcast, but I'm really excited. You guys were begging for a while for me to bring that back, but uh, now it's now it's with wheels and it's the seventh round bust, and I'm I'm very excited about it. Swami had like you know time constraints that he just couldn't uh, live up to, and he couldn't make time for the podcast. So I get it. But uh, what are we gonna be doing on this podcast, wheels? Let them know. I mean, you know, just talking about football, really, like mm-hmm. all sorts of football stuff, NFL, college, anything in between yeah. so yeah um mainly about that but i guess just you know the banter and all that too so mm-hmm. i think it i think this could be a good time so like another thing is you guys might be wondering why are you starting a football podcast as soon as the regular season ends that doesn't make any sense well here's why one things are just getting spicy playoff football is about to start we're gonna be talking about that about that a lot in this episode uh we're also gonna be talking about the off season the draft and that's when things really start to get exciting because say what you want but the draft the first round second round you know all the way through to the seventh that three-day window is the most important three days of the entire football calendar it's not the super bowl it isn't you know any moment in preseason or the regular season or the playoffs your future is determined with how well you draft look at any of these teams that do well it's not because of free agency. It just isn't. Teams build through the draft, and that's how you win games. Who are, who are the best teams in the NFL right now? Chiefs? Chiefs. Saints? Saints. Um, um, I guess even Eagles. Yeah, but the point being, and I know with the Saints, obviously, with Drew Brees, they Cowboys. traded for him. But, like, yeah, but point being, like, you can pick maybe a few free agents that have made that team better on either. We'll go with the Chiefs. So, like, Who are their best players? Justin Houston, they drafted him. Chris Jones, they drafted him. Patrick Mahomes, obviously, they drafted him. Kareem Hunt before going down, but obviously he's a good player (laughs) before kicking a lady. (laughs) Drafted him. He was a third-round pick out of Toledo. Uh, You know, they they did sign Sammy Watkins, but that isn't even their best receiver on the team. Tyreek Hill. They, I think he was a a late draft pick. I can't remember who went on draft. He had the... the, uh... The off the, the field, off the field stuff, yeah. A lot but, of pretty bad off the field issues. Like, like <laughs> beating worse, a pregnant lady. Worse than Kareem Hunt off the field issues. Oh, way worse. Way uh, Travis worse. Kelsey. They drafted him. Drafted him, yep. Uh, let's see. Was Tyreek um, Hill draft fifth round? Yeah, he was a late he was a late yeah. uh, draft pick. So, you know, it goes to show you they traded for Kendall Fuller, right? Yep. But they drafted Eric Berry. And like all these players they drafted them, and that's why these teams are as good as they are, because of their draft picks. So it's the most important day, so that's why we're starting this going into the offseason, because I love the draft, I love talking about the draft, I love college football, uh, and the first rant I kind of want to do, I know I'm kind of <laughs> dominating the mic right now, but uh, we also talked about a bunch of stuff earlier. Yeah. Um, I, I post mock draft videos on YouTube from time to time, and it, the people that really annoy me on those videos in the comments section, and uh on twitter and all this like once the draft season comes around everybody's suddenly an expert everyone everyone in my comment section 
all these, you know, experts who are making mock drafts on like CBS Sports and all these different websites, everyone becomes an expert all of a sudden. And so when I post a mock draft and I and I have a player that's slated to go like number 15 and I get no way this player drops to that or <laughs> that's way beyond his value. It's like you don't know what their value is. You have no idea. So in today's video, I had Greedy Williams falling to 22, which does seem like a f big drop. But it's what is his value? He might not even be the best cornerback in this class. Cornerback is, is weaker than it has been in years past. I probably would say that a lot of people could value DeAndre Baker above Greedy Williams. You could value Byron Murphy above Greedy Williams. There are so many players that are so good in this class, especially on the defensive side of the ball. And a player like, like Greedy... He could fall to 22. He could fall to the second round. So when people are telling me that, oh, yeah, they, that's unbelievable. This is a terrible mock draft. This player is not where they're supposed to be. This team would never do that. How often, when it comes to the draft, do players not go in spaces that, that, that media has them projected to be? How often do teams go, oh, this team definitely needs to take an offensive lineman, and then they go cornerback, and people are like, unbelievable they have every every single pick seems to be unexpected someone complained on my seahawks pick is it like uh you have the seahawks taking an offensive tackle every year and and they never have <laughs> well they're stupid p carroll's <laughs> dumb you take rashad penny in the first round no yeah. one saw that coming they don't they didn't need a running back he's the third string running back right now chris carson won and then they have mike davis too <laughs> And then Rashad Penny, three. Why would you ever take a running back, let alone reaching on Rashad Penny at the end of the first round? You don't need a running back. You need everything else. And they're like, running back in the first round when he probably would have been available. And even, even if he wouldn't be available, good. You don't need him. Why would you draft him? Yeah. Even if he was like up for offensive rookie of the year, especially talking about a running back. Look what Phillip Lindsay did as an undrafted player. Uh, for the Broncos this year it's like they didn't need a running back but that's that's kind of my rant on draft season it's like you guys a lot of you some of you do not know what you're talking about but some of you watch highlights and you think a player is great because you saw their best moments like when people tweet at me with Josh Allen it's like check out his highlights someone linked me a, a top 10 plays of Josh Allen's 2018 season and like what do you think now I'm like you linked me a fucking highlight tape you linked me 10 <laughs> plays of the best of the best that he did it doesn't mean anything he had more interceptions and touchdowns show me the 12 interceptions he threw over the 10 touchdowns like like highlights are dumb and then like when i say you guys all think you're experts it's like a lot of you just read mock drafts or whatever or they you hear what experts nobody knows right <laughs> You can only project. I watch the tape myself and you, well, what credibility do you have? It happens all the time. Stick to Madden. It's like, why don't you check out some of my scouting reports I've done on players over the year? Check out the, the videos that I've made. Check out any of the stuff I've tweeted. I'm usually pretty spot on. I don't, I don't look for what other people are saying. I make my own opinions and then I relay them out there. I'm not looking to copycat anybody. So when some people say, well, this this is just you copying what somebody else is saying. No, it isn't. It's just, it's just ridiculous that people would say that. Um, and especially when I disagree about something. Like when, I, when I said Baker Mayfield, and Wheels was on that train as well with Baker Mayfield yep. being QB1 yep. last year, you wouldn't believe it. And I, I don't take a big stock in the comment section. I'm just pointing out some things about the way everybody is around this time of year. Oh, Baker's terrible. He's going to bust out easily. You think Baker is the best QB in the class? What an idiot you are. And then here we are. Baker Mayfield is tearing it up. And then, of course, I, I'm not going to get credit for that now. Like, no one's going to be like, oh, come back to the video after they talk shit mm -hmm. and say, oh, we have Bengal, I guess you were right. It's like, no, they don't. All they do, oh, you have no idea what you're talking about. Well, clearly, if I disagree with the experts on some things. And then, like, oh, how many guys think Baker was going to bust? A lot of these top draft guys did. Yep. They go, oh, Baker's there. And then now here, it was too small for the position. He's he's too this, he's too that. Colin Coward's an idiot. I mean, it's just crazy it's... how everyone's an expert around draft season, it yeah. seems. When they don't, they don't watch the players, they don't have the qualifications or the ability to scout these players. They just read what they... Are, and then they say what they read. And we, we, Wheels and I were talking about like guys who copycat on uh, like Twitter and stuff and they don't have their own opinions. They just hear what other people say and they're like, Oh, this is my opinion now. 
And then when you offer a counter to it, they just revert back to what they said the first time because they don't actually have that opinion. They just saw somebody else say it and then they picked it up as their own. I know that's a super long rant to start things off, but like it just it makes me annoyed. Just, it just does. Get I can't it not get annoyed. Yeah. <laughs> no, nah, like I get it. Like well, we got on the Baker train last year and he like beginning of last year, like last uh, college football season, he was projected like third, fourth round pick at that point. And yeah. we were saying he was the best quarterback. And like you even have guys now that are like, "Oh, who thought Baker should have been the number one quarterback last year?" It's like <laughs> we we did. <laughs> like yeah. these so called Mah- experts. Mahomes a year before that. Yeah, Mahomes. Dude, I was when on, I, we're on the Mahomes. When I was train. on the train, and you, you you were on as well. Um, mm-hmm. When I started talking about him as QB one, you know how many people were like, "That's so stupid. This guy is is not even be that good. He's come from air raid. Uh, he's coming from an air raid system, and he's too erratic, and he doesn't do this right. He doesn't do that right." And I'm like, "Well, you can see the potential is there, and th- that's true with a lot of guys." But he's making these unbelievable throws, and all you have to do is pair him up with a high-level coach like Andy Reid is. You don't even really have to get him in the right system. You just have to work out some of the kinks, and then as he gets more experience, he's going to become more consistent. That would, that's what it happened. Or, or, that's how it happened. A lot of yep. the time when these players rise to be as good as they are, like a lot of these guys don't have good rookie seasons. Peyton Manning threw for a ton of interceptions his, his mm-hmm. first season, but like. People called me crazy for not recognizing how good Mitchell Trubisky was supposed to be. Or who was QB two in that for a lot of people? Uh, wasn't it, it, it wasn't Watson? Mahomes? Yeah, Deshaun Watson. Ugh, that's a, that's a conversation for another day. <laughs> uh, but like Trubisky's nothing exceptional. And then so when I have Mahomes as QB one, and people, oh, you're so stupid. Trubisky's the best in the class. I'm like, yeah, really? Like, ha- is off he? what? Like, you have like way more to look at with Mahomes and then like Trubisky had like 12 games <laughs> and it isn't even so much about the games but it's just like people don't know what they're talking about and then they try to represent as if they do yeah and they'll they'll latch on to these opinions that are not well founded so like whenever I talk trash about a player be like why do you hate this guy it's like I'm recognizing how it is versus how you want it to be and how it appears to be to you so I'm going to touch on Deshaun Watson briefly, but Mitchell Trubisky has been average in the NFL so far. He's been a game manager, essentially, for the Bears, and he, he runs that offense. He hasn't done anything particularly amazing. He's not even close to a top-10 quarterback. No. He doesn't. He makes a team a little bit better, but I, I really think you could pull in anyone. Like, Chase Daniel is is bad, and even he looked okay. Like, on what, the Thanksgiving game? Who, they played the Lions? Yep, yep. He looked okay in that game. Like, he was all right. He's never been more than a backup quarterback. Um, I know the offense was slowed in that. And, and I'm not saying Trubisky is Chase Daniel. Trubisky obviously better than Chase Daniel, but he's nothing special. He's a game manager. I mean, just look at the stats. 3,200 yeah. yards, 24 touchdowns, 12 picks. Like, that's good for a game manager. He's but like it's, a, it's all right. Yeah, you'll see that. He how was, many? Um, he was a number how many, two overall pick. How many attempts did he have? Uh, and how many games did he play in? Like, 13? Four, 14 games. Okay. 434 attempts. So 434. 66%. Like the completion percentage, good. 66%. So he had 434 attempts divided by 14. Can't do that math in my head. So that's 31. That's only 31 attempts per game. And how, how, what was the yards on that? You said 3,200? Yeah. Divided by 434. That's only seven yards per attempt. It's like this is nothing crazy here. Yeah. It's just typical like game manager level quarterbacking. Um, and then with Deshaun Watson, somebody commented at me the other day. He's like, oh, it doesn't matter about, like, and I think PFF can be stupid sometimes, but it doesn't matter about your PFF made-up stats. And we're talking about, like, turnover-worthy throw percentage or turnover-worthy play. Yep. And it's like, if you're throwing into traffic, and even just the other day versus the Colts, and I have a friend who's a big Deshaun Watson fan, I'm, I'm presenting some of this information to him, and he's just like, that's stupid. All I care about are yards and touchdowns and fantasy points. Like, it's ridiculous. So I see, I show him Deshaun Watson throwing the ball literally to a Colts cornerback and bouncing off his hands like 10 yards, and it ends up in DeAndre Hopkins' hands. Yeah. And it is for, it listed as a first down. It never shows that it, it should have been an interception. So that's what the turnover-worthy play Stat from PFF tracks, a lot of those plays. And it's like, well, I, I don't care about any of that. But here's why you should care. Because if that quarterback's getting lucky, how how lucky can you be for so long? 
Right. You can't. And so my friend in the group chat, of course, shows me uh, when I say that Deshaun Watson doesn't have a good deep ball, he's like, well, look at this deep ball. It's the same thing going back to the highlights, man. Let me pull up a pull up a stat. I'll give Wheels the floor here for yeah, a minute. Yeah, like, like the thing with the highlights is like highlights are cool, but you got to look at the the entire picture with the everything. Mm-hmm. So like if you're going to say like so-and-so is good, especially with the draft, you got to like you got to really know what you're talking about. Um if you if you're like a big college this is why i've never done mock drafts and i've told you about this is because mm-hmm. i don't watch every single player and like i don't know about every single player so that's why i've never done and that's why i hate it when people do mock drafts that like clearly don't know like don't even watch college football and they're like oh here's a mock drafts like how did you come to this conclusion <laughs> i've seen people on youtube that literally say yeah youtube's um, bad with it no it's terrible yeah. like well i don't i, I want to preface this which i don't watch college football but this is my mock draft because you guys have been asking for it or whatever. It's like, it's, like, you it's not yours it. then. It's it's you taking other people's mock drafts mm-hmm. or looking at prospect lists and just plugging and placing random positions and random players into these teams. You have no idea. It's oh. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, I'm trying to find this. Set. Just watch. <laughs> like you don't. I don't even know. Like. You don't have to really watch tape. Like you can get a general idea of like, especially like the big like position players, like skill position players. If you watch games, you will kind of have an understanding. That's how like, like for me, like I don't really watch tape. I also don't do mock drafts. But like you know, I saw what Baker Mayfield did last year in the years before Patrick Mahomes. Like just watching games, you could tell like, you could sometimes, not always, but you could sometimes tell like, yeah, that player's good. Case in point, Josh Allen this? this year. Oh, okay. I'll just finish with it. Josh no, Allen. No, no, like, go ahead. New Josh Allen, by the way. That's going to be fun. <laughs> Two Josh Allens in the NFL. But I want Josh Allen to versus, sack Josh Allen. Yeah, yeah. but it's Josh Allen, great. Kentucky Josh Allen. Oh, like, yeah. I, I heard about him, didn't know about him, played against Florida, and I was he dominated that game. I was like, yeah, this guy is unbelievable. And I had him in Josh my Allen first team. round last year when I was doing some mock drafts. Yeah. I had him going to the Steelers, I think, in a couple mocks. You remember Jarvis Jones, by the way? I just thought of an edge rush with the Steelers. Right? <laughs> oh, terrible. All right, but here's the stat. And I think email, she was editing this probably. Big shout out to you. You've been awesome on my main channel. Um, if you guys watch Ozark State and things like that. But this is the Deshaun Watson versus Tom Savage 2017 deep ball project. So, like, I've seen some people. When I when I tried to find this on Twitter, I searched deep ball. It's just like these idiots tweeting. And if you have the check mark on Twitter, like, it, it seems like your opinion people like value it for some reason deshaun watson might have one of the best deep balls i've ever seen it's just people say ridiculous things anyway this is the deshaun watson versus tom savage 27 deep ball project brought to you by at brick wall blitz johnny kinsley thank you for this so here's the accuracy percentages so watson in 2017 who people were saying was was the mvp by the way this year and not saying that deep ball accuracy determines that but it's just a fun little fact for perspective he was 20 of 51 going to the field good for 39.2 percent on deep balls not great right tom savage was 22 of 44 50 percent watson received play action on 16 of 51 passes 31.4 percent and was accurate on uh, five of six or or on five of his 16 passes 31.3 percent while savage received play action on seven of 44 passes 15.9 percent but was accurate on two of his seven, so 28.6%. Kind of a a low number there. Uh, He didn't play very much. Watson had a clean pocket on 40 of 51 deep attempts. Exceptional, 78.4%, and was accurate on 37.8% of those passes. While Savage received a clean pocket 68.2% of the time and was accurate on 46.7% of those passes. Watson was under pressure on 21.6%. On those attempts, he was under pressure 21.6%. Accurate on 45% of those throws. Savage was under pressure 31.8%, yet was accurate on 57% of those passes. Watson had an open window to throw on 20 of those 51 pass attempts, 39.2%. It was accurate on 12 of 20, 60%. Savage had an open window on 8 of 44, which is 18.2%, yet was accurate on... Six of eight, seventy-five percent. I know a lot of numbers here, um, <laughs> but just point being, like Tom Savage has a better deep ball than Deshaun Watson, and Tom Savage is terrible, right? 
yet Deshaun Watson is glorified like he's this next great quarterback when he's been lucky a lot of the time. And I'm not saying he's not a good player because he's a super exciting player to watch. Uh, very adept at making players miss. Yep. Very hard to sack. He's great out of the pocket. He's great running the football. But he's not an elite passer by any stretch of the imagination. He is, in fact, a below-average passer. And there was another stat as well um, about allowed sacks. So quarterbacks that were directly credited with sacks. And this is from Pro Football Focus via, his name's like Steve Palalazzo or something like that. Um, and it, it was how often these quarterbacks actually, like, you know, run into sacks essentially. And based on them moving around the pocket, and not staying in the pocket, uh, you know you know what I'm saying. So how often they are solely responsible for being taken down. So Dak Prescott led the league with 15. Deshaun Watson was at 14. Wilson, 13. Mahomes, 10. Trubisky, 9. Goff, 8. Lamar Jackson, 8. Josh Rosen, 7. So when you're up there, and keep in mind, so this was the top, uh, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I believe that is when you're in the top nine of that happening and Dak and Deshaun Watson are double or more yeah. what the bottom of the top 10 is in terms of running into sacks. That also isn't good. So I think um, with part of people saying, Oh, these guys are such good runners or their offensive lines are so terrible. Well, it helps you put in perspective that a lot of these times, these quarterbacks are putting themselves in these positions rather than being beat by their offensive lines. So I know that's another like big rant, but like <laughs> I think these things need to be said. Yeah. I really do. Yeah. No, like, just look at the whole picture. Don't base everything off of what other people are saying. Like, come up with your own opinions, you know? Mm -hmm. Look at look at the game, look at the players, and try to come up with your own opinions. Don't don't like base it off of highlights or what other people are saying you know watch the games watch the player come with your opinions you'll sound a lot smarter <laughs> with what you're trying to say and like you'll have you'll actually be able to argue like maybe you have different opinions you'll be able to argue you know certain points if you actually watch the player so mm -hmm. that is uh yeah that's i think <laughs> i think we that's a draft season rant yeah. kind of evolved into yeah. a deshaun we'll, we'll get, watson uh, rant we'll get more into the draft season stuff and like if there's like certain players that you guys want us to maybe look at and talk about on the podcast like just let us know and mm -hmm. uh we'll start doing that comment section to me a great friend and we yep. can even argue with you guys like or respond to questions definitely put questions down in the comment section below mm -hmm. that we can address in the next podcast if we like the question enough. So like it's more so than just you know like oh who do you think my favorite team's going to draft but better what player do you think is a great scheme fit for this team or you know whatever that would be or what player uh has the most natural scheme fit to one of these teams or you know, who does this player remind you of? And that can kind of go into its whole tangent because you say like, uh, who does Nick Bosa remind you of? Well, then you can, you know, based on height, weight, ability, whatever, you know, game tape, we can compare them to an actual player. Uh, and I think that makes it kind of fun for you guys because maybe you say, let's just go a random comparison. It's not going to be accurate, but we'll say Nick Bosa and we'll go, I don't want to do Joey because that's like, that's not that fun. <laughs> we'll just say, we'll say uh, Brandon Graham. I, it's not who I think it would be. It's just random comparison. But then you're like, oh, so maybe you can compare this player. I think we're going to be getting a Brandon Graham out of this guy. And, you know, you'll hear that and you'll kind of know what to expect or, or know what to hope for or something like that. So try to come up with thought-provoking questions rather than just maybe even some of those examples I gave yeah. rather than just, like, opinion on the Giants. It's like it gives me nothing to work with. It gives We don't have anything to go off of with that. Just opinion on, I hate that. Hate yeah. that so much. And if you ask you for uh, the amount of people that say that, thoughts on? If, if you ask for Drew Locke, I'll tell you Blake Bortles, <laughs> <laughs> Daniel Jones. <laughs> oh yeah, D Daniel Jones. I meant Daniel Jones is Blake Bortles. But yeah, no. Drew Locke's we'll, interesting. Drew Locke. Yeah, we'll get into all this in future podcasts. You know, as we approach draft season. And something Wheels that. and I were talking about was both of us doing uh, tape breakdowns slash like uh like 
tape research on a player before the episode or you know sometime during the week i don't know really mm-hmm. how often we're going to do these hopefully once a week hopefully yeah um maybe even more but hopefully once a week but yep. probably once a week maybe uh, definitely once a week maybe like more you know, like closer to the depending on if something big happens yeah, or, or something other like stuff, that yeah but uh we'll do like tape research on that one player and then we'll talk about him during the next episode so each episode could be focused around a certain player getting a lot of hype or maybe not getting a lot of hype, but maybe they should be. Mm-hmm. Like, like you know, Shane Zimenez out of Old Dominion is a really intriguing player yep. who is really talented in some ways, but is really lacking in others. So that's a fun player. Maybe a guy that's getting a ton of hype at quarterback, like like uh, Dwayne Haskins recently will say, this is why he's getting that hype, this is why he's good, but here's why he isn't. And this is why maybe he's getting too much hype. And that's just an example Um doesn't mean i mean that or whatever but that's just one super hype player versus someone that you know comes from old dominion so not hyped as much but we have some hall of fame stuff to talk about yes yeah, so today when we're recording this the hall of fame finalists got announced so that is the uh the 15 modern day players or coaches uh and then we already had the two contributors i believe and then the senior senior vote so mm-hmm. um I guess I could go over the the modern era finalists, probably like the people that you guys would know, the people listening. So we have uh, Steve Atwater. No, well, actually, you know what? I'll go off with the three first first uh, first ballot guys. So Champ Bailey, Tony Gonzalez, Ed Reed, they're finalists. Um, then we have Steve Atwater, Tony Baselli, Isaac Bruce, Don Coriel, uh, Alan Fanica, Tom Flores, Steve Hutchinson, Edron James, Ty Law, John Lynch, Kevin Mawai, and then Richard Seymour are the uh, the modern era guys. And then we had Johnny Robinson as the senior vote, which we'll talk about him in a little bit because uh, mm-hmm. I didn't know who he was. I don't think either of us yeah, did. I, I had never heard of him. Um, and then the contributors, Gilbrandt and Pat Bolin. So those are the 18 guys. Now, the how the Hall of Fame vote works is – minimum of four up to eight and it's between those 18 players that are people that I just named so that just got it's gonna be today. interesting um uh, right off the I bat we'll go... the three first ballot guys they're getting in champ yeah, Bailey, Ed Reed, a... tony gonzalez they're getting it I, I would agree i think guys that are are fringe could get in this year but maybe not i think it's steve hutchinson yep i think that's uh john lynch who we, we'll talk about him yep um you want to well okay say your thing about brian dawkins first with john lynch <laughs> this is like a hot take but like i think john lynch should have been in the hall of fame before brian dawkins and or at okay, the very it, least it, like at the same time yeah here's what i said to uh to wills when he said that prior to the podcast i said well maybe not before him but I agree with that at the same time. Yeah. John Lynch should already be in the Hall of Fame. Yep. But if you look at their career numbers and their career accomplishments, like they're almost identical. Uh and then John Lynch is one of the best safeties in the he's NFL got has a ever Super Bowl seen. Win on he does a really, well. really dominating defense. One of the best defenses of all time. So John Lynch here, Super Bowl champion on that Bucks team. He also is a nine time Pro Bowler. Three-time first-team All-Pro, one-time second-team All-Pro. When check out Brian Dawkins, he is a nine-time Pro Bowler, five-time first-team All-Pro, one-time second-team All-Pro. So even though both same-time Pro Bowl or same number of Pro Bowls, um, he was a five or excuse me, a first-team All-Pro two more times, which I think is pretty impressive. Yeah. Uh, yeah. John Lynch does have the Super Bowl though, but so basically identical. In that, Brian Dawkins just happens to have uh, two more first-team All-Pros. And when you look at Brian Dawkins, you look at his his career numbers. Interceptions, he has 37. John Lynch, on the other hand, has um, 26. Although they were different style of players, Brian Dawkins played in the same number of games as John Lynch, both at 224. Forced fumbles, John Lynch has 16. Brian Dawkins has uh, 36. That's a that's a lot. Holy, that is a 36 lot. That is fumbles. A lot. <laughs> that's a lot more than I thought. Uh, I don't know. Maybe maybe you know. Like, oh, yeah, Brian oh. Dawkins game. The thing is though, in terms of achievements, 
They're yeah. they're identical. It, the um, thing is, like John Lynch has been on the ballot for so much longer than Brian Dawkins that he should have been in before him. That's kind of they both have over a thousand going. combined tackles. Um, also, but like, I, I I don't know. I feel like like John Lynch was more of a uh, like like. I don't want to say enforcer because Brian Dawkins has all those uh, forced yeah. fumbles. But John Lynch, to me, was always like he was a linebacker yep. in 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 the box that that was capable of going up and getting the football. Obviously, twenty six interceptions kind of shows that. But like Brian Dawkins was a guy that was more of a uh, like a safety that could come up and lay the boom. It was getting a lot of tackles on those Eagles teams, partly because of a. Uh, you know who was on those Eagles teams, mm-hmm. but he was more of a, a cover guy more than jo- uh, John Lynch. And John Lynch, John Lynch uh, to me, was more of a like, in the box player. And maybe yep. that's just how I remember it. But their achievements are almost identical. And John Lynch does have that Super Bowl, and he was part of what made that defense as good as it was with Derek Brooks and and guys like that, and Simeon Rice Warren I think was Sapp. on that team, and yeah, Warren Sapp. I don't know. It's just he's a super underrated player. And the fact that he isn't already in the Hall of Fame, to me, is just ridiculous. Yeah, I think he was on the ballot like four or five years more than Brian Dawkins. That, mm-hmm. That's like kind of where I'm like, I'm not saying like John Lynch was the better player. I'm just saying like yeah, he should that, have been in already. That's not the argument here. Yeah, yeah. he should have been in already. It's just that if you're going to elect Brian Dawkins in the Hall of Fame as quickly as you did and then say, eh, John Lynch can just kind of sit there for years and years and years. Well, their numbers are very comparable. I know 10 interceptions more all time or 11 is a uh, pretty telling from that standpoint. But I mean, that's just not all that goes into a safety or all into a player. It's not yeah. the better player. Isn't the one with more interceptions necessarily. And, and I'm not trying to say again with you that John Lynch is better than Brian Dawkins. I don't believe that, but when their numbers are as similar as they all are all time, they both have the same number of pro bowls. Brian Dawkins only has two more first team, all pros, same number of second team all pros. How are you going to say that Brian Dawkins is a Hall of Famer automatically, immediately? Yet yeah, John Lynch isn't. Yeah, just seems dumb. Yeah, so it, it's going to be rough for him to get in with Ed Reed, Champ Bailey, this year. Like two defensive backs. Like put in another th- defensive back. Like it's really yeah. rare that multiple players from the same position get in the Hall of Fame the same year. Last year was like. Re- kind of a pretty pretty wild of how good it's like they are. two wide receivers yeah. two yeah. linebackers gotten him but they're also like amazing absolutely amazing but yeah i think john lynch should have already been in and honestly like he's probably gonna miss out again this year unfortunately but what do you think him. about the edge the edge Edrin is james uh, so interesting such an interesting player Edrin james i don't think is gonna get in <laughs> i i agree but like um he could eventually get in I think this is not the year for him. But like this his definitely numbers is not the year. Are they're insane. incredible. They're they insane really are. numbers. If you guys haven't seen Edron James' numbers, definitely go look it up. But he has multiple 1,500-yard rushing seasons. And we talked about highlights aren't really indicative of player skill. That's when kind of uh, determining how good they are as like a prospect or something like that. But definitely look up Edger and James highlights because they are unbelievable. Yeah, Edger and he James is amazing. top fifteen all time in rushing yards. There are guys behind him in the Hall of Fame. Yep. Marcus Allen, who should mm. not have been a Hall of Famer in my <laughs> opinion. Just Marcus Allen is so weird. Just just look and, at just look at Marcus Allen's stats, like season by season stats, and then Edger and James season by season stats, and you're gonna be like, Wow. How's they're, Marcus they're Allen? Very, <laughs> Marcus they're Allen very just similar. played for like a super long time that's kind of part of yeah he played for 11 years with the Raiders and five with the Chiefs here's the thing about Marcus Allen and to me there's more to a player than uh just how high they are on the all-time lists Mm -hmm. and and I think it is that is important but when you look at Marcus Allen this is a player that only three times in his entire career of 16 years rushed for over a thousand yards now, one of those seasons, he was over 1,700, which is pretty ridiculous. The other seasons, 1,100 and 1,000. And he had a bunch of seasons of double-digit touchdowns. I do like that. Uh, he was influential in the passing game, especially early on. But he's a guy that had a great start to his career and then kind of split carries for the rest of his career. And yep. to me, 
wasn't overly impressive. He just got a ton of carries early on and then kind of fizzled out in my opinion in terms of uh in terms of total yards and that that does matter. Edger and James played for only 11 years compared to Marcus Allen's 16-year career. He has more total yards uh, rushing, which granted that's only by uh like 3 yards. Yeah, Marshall, excuse me, Edger and James 12,246, Marcus Allen 12,243. <laughs> um Edger and James has 80 touchdowns all time. That is just rushing. Receiving, he has 11 touchdowns. Marcus Allen has, uh, let's see here, 123 rushing touchdowns and then 21 receiving. So this is a guy that got into the end zone far more often than Edger and James did, but he also played a lot more seasons. you got to also remember who Edger and James played with. For a while, Curtis Martin. Or should we, uh, Marshall Falk, not Curtis Martin. Marshall Falk, they both played on the same team for, I believe, a year. Yeah, um, and then I think the, 98. Pretty much for Edger the whole James time he was there. Peyton Manning was his quarterback. <laughs> like, yeah. It's Hold Peyton on. Manning. So it, w- it wasn't like he was the main, no. you know. That's it. Yeah. The guy. Uh, Curtis Martin got traded away, and then Marshall the Colts Falk. drafted Edger and James. Marshall Why do I keep saying Curtis Martin? God. So he got traded away in that 98 season. And then the Chiefs are... Just, what am I talking about? The Colts drafted uh, Edgerton James in 99. I, I'm going brain dead right now. Who, there was another... Dominic Rhodes split carries. I'm trying to think of the other one. Joseph Adai? No, no, Joseph, Joseph Adai was drafted was, in 07. Yeah, so, so it was they after they never James played together. already gone. There was someone else. It was else, Dominic though. Rhodes and somebody else. Yeah, I, I, I know there was someone else. God. Anyway, but, like, the, but Peyton yeah. Manning opposed to the Raiders <laughs> during that time. And I don't know, like it's, if you're going to let Marcus Allen in, and I know more touchdowns, but like the yardage is so similar in a, a shorter amount of time. So Dominic Rhodes was drafted in 01. He played until 2006 with the Colts and then came back later. But, uh, damn, so Dominic Rhodes had a great rookie season, 1100 yards and nine touchdowns. Yeah, Dominic Rhodes is pretty good. It's a great backfield, but I, I can't remember who the other running back was. Maybe there wasn't one, and I'm just kind of being weird about it. I thought there was, but I thought there was too. But now that I'm, I'm also kind of brain it, dead like, right I now. Don't, I don't see who else it could have been. Yeah, so could just be like you know false memory or whatever. But uh, Edger and James was such a good player, and he was a guy like he is what Saquon Barkley is now, or what Todd Gurley is now. Just someone that could catch and run. Yep. Like, and you didn't really see that for a while. Like Matt Forte, I feel like was the next guy that really did that well. I know Priest Holmes kind of did it at the same time, but those those were not you know a dime a dozen. Those players were uh, rare. It was rare that guys were doing that. Running backs ran the football for a while, and then Edger and James, one of those guys that really could do it all. Like his his first two years, he had over a thousand yards receiving combined, not not individually, right. but combined. And he had nine receiving touchdowns combined in those first two years. And maybe this is another case where it's like Marcus Allen almost to where he had a, you know, like such a great start that it's overshadowed, but it isn't. Yeah, he, 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 he came going. back. His, uh, his injury in his third year at 23 only had him at 662 rushing yards. But after that, 989 and 14, this guy had 1,259 yards in 13 games. 1,500 yards the next year. 1,500 yards the next year. He rushed for over 1,500 yards four times. Crazy. And for over 1,000, what's that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's seven times he rushed for over 1,000 yards in a season. Mm-hmm. Five times of, what is that, of nine touchdowns or more. Like, such an, such an underrated player. He's not going to get in first ballot, clearly. But this is a guy that is better than the Hall of Very Good. He yeah. should be in the Hall of Fame eventually. I don't know when. Yeah, um, I don't think he's going to get in this time, but he's. I think he's closer than what a lot of people think. And I'm trying to think of like other running backs that might come up on the vote soon. Try, mm-hmm. like who 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 would come up soon? 
That's not. So it'd be guys that retired in five years the ago, late two so. thousands. So, uh, or should, yeah, uh, late two thousands, early twenty tens. So Stephen Jackson is probably going to be in that list. I, th- I think mm, who would he get? Probably Edger and James over Stephen Jackson. Stephen Jackson was so good though. Yeah, that's that's the that's problem. a tough one. Like, that's a no- see. There this are is, so this many is good be running the issue backs. with a lot of these guys right now too. Is that there's a lot Fred of Taylor, first ballot guys. Fred, Fred Taylor is on the right now, right? Fred, De- yeah, he should have. He probably would have been on the yeah. ballot already. So you didn't get um, in this time. Um, so Sean, Sean yes. Alexander, but like he wouldn't ever get in, even though he was an MVP. Um, who else? I'm trying to think of who else hasn't been up, but like a lot of these older guys that's like coming, like still on the ballot, they're gonna have a tough time mm-hmm. getting in still because there's so many, so many uh, first ballot guys that's gonna get in. Tiki Barber is still waiting. I don't think he'll ever get Fred in. Fred Taylor retired in 2010. The Edge retired in 2009. Yeah, I'm looking so, at I'm looking at a like not, Jamal got, Lewis is someone that's probably gonna get on the ballot. I'm looking at guys that's that was on the semifinal. I don't know. And it's like Jamal Lewis was so so good. He, he is for a while. the best as, out of the bunch here. He only, he, Jamal Lewis only played nine years. Yeah, Jamal That's Lewis. Crazy. He kind of like he's 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 like Marcus Allen, where he started off really well. And then Thomas Jones is another one that could get on the ballot. Oh, that's an interesting one. So, but I, he, I don't think he's a Hall of Fame player at all. But I don't know. We'll see. I, don't, I feel like his competition I mean, it won't be that much. Yeah, I'm looking at uh, – I'm just trying to quickly look at guys Clinton at 2020. Portis could be someone that gets on. Yeah, and these are guys he's already beat out. Yeah. These Clinton are, Portis is the I interesting don't, The only, only running back I see well. coming up is Ronnie Brown, who wouldn't get in over him. <laughs> Ronnie Brown probably wouldn't even make it to the I don't think finalists. Ronnie Brown would even make the ballot. Do you think he'd get on? No. Absolutely Clinton Portis not. is a guy that that would get on the ballot. He's another one. Is Clinton Portis a Hall of Fame player to you? Clinton Portis, see, he was, like I remember being so good. I and you look at his numbers too, and they are so good. Fifteen hundred yards, fifteen ninety one, thirteen hundred, fifteen hundred. Only played eight games, so five hundred twenty three, and they came back twelve hundred, almost thirteen hundred, and they has about fifteen hundred. And in those years, he had double digit touchdowns almost every year. Yeah. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six years of over a thousand yards of his nine years that he played, four years of double digit touchdowns, and then one nine touchdown year, 75 rushing touchdowns with almost 10,000 yards in his career. Yeah, I mean, so, so like it's him being the only running back, like kind of there for a while, that will probably, he'll probably get in because of that. Because I, I'm looking, there's no one even close for a while that's going to be like, oh, yeah, this yeah. guy should be in. Like, who would be the next player? Like, Frank Gore, whenever he retires, but that'll be five well, years. For it's going to be Peterson, Frank Gore, Adrian Peterson. At least five years. Dude, what do you think about Shady? Oh, that's a – I think Shady he, doesn't feel like a Hall of Fame I think player needs, to me. But... I, I think he needs, like, a late career – Boom. But his numbers are so good. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six years of a thousand yards or more. And he did that. He's had multiple thousand yard years with uh, multiple teams. Yep. Eagles and the Bills. Kind of like an Eric Dickerson situation almost. He has two years of double digit touchdowns, including one year with 17. He had a, a nine touchdown year. He's a guy that has a ton of receiving yards all time and 15 receiving touchdowns all time is pretty good. Yep. So ah, he's he's a weird one. Yeah. So the next guy that will come up is Stephen Jackson next year. Yeah. And Steven I think Jackson. Edron James will get in over Stephen Jackson for now. So what are Stephen Jackson's career numbers? Stephen Jackson, he had a eight year stretch of a thousand yards. Dude, I would season. have thought he had more touchdowns in his career. I, that's 69. what I saw. I mean, too. It, it, it's nice. It's nice. It is nice. <laughs> but I thought he nine. Like, I remember him scoring touchdowns all the time. It was like sixty nine. Yeah. It's like dang. Whoa, 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 look at his 2006 season. He had a year of 800 receiving yards. Yeah. What? <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. And the, in that year, he had a, he also rushed for 1,500. He was a good player. Yeah. Steven Jackson was really mm-hmm. good. So, like, Edron James, I think Edron James, he's got, while, like, there's first ballot guys coming up, they'll get him over him, like, in other positions. Like, he's the only running back there for a while. So I think he'll eventually get in, but this year is just 
I, I don't see it this year. Hmm. Might be too early, but I mean, we, we can look at the other list? guys. So we got uh, Tony Baselli. I think Tony Baselli should probably be in. The, it's hard the, for me. The, to, the issue to with Tony Baselli, I've never seen. The only issue with Tony Baselli, he played what six years, seven years, so ninety-five to oh one. So that's that's so weird. So seven years, yeah, seven seasons. Like, that's so small. So like Tony Baselli is really good, but that's a tough one. Um, he is a three-time first-team All-Pro. He is a five-time Pro Bowler. He was very good. With the uh, he was the offensive lineman of the year in '98. He's on the Jags. '90s All-Decade team. Yeah. No, he was a really, really good. I don't. Player. I don't know. It's just the, I don't, I don't that's know. it's it's an hey, issue. He played of, for he too play short that of a long. time. Yeah. And that really that, that does matter, especially at offensive line. Like, if yeah. you played for five years, let's say, and you had, like, 8,000 re- rushing yards, mm-hmm. maybe it's a different story because that's Terrell Davis right there. Yeah. Let's see, let's see Terrell Davis' all-time numbers. Um, yeah, his is like, ooh. Like, he, he, almost, Davis, he, he was so good in, in that short span that, like, I could understand why, but, like, ooh. His, he didn't play, he didn't his, play his that number, long. <laughs> his numbers are crazy, but he played one, two – Three, four, five, six, seven years. Maybe seventy like six hundred yards. Actual years. <laughs> yeah. So because he played at the end, he had four games, four games, eight and games maybe started. So like four actual years he played. Four, but four he was years. So dominant in those four years that like you had to put him. Like his last. Let, let like me good count year? up these numbers. Let me count up these three seasons for you and tell you these ridiculous numbers. Uh, the, his MVP talk. year is disgusting. I know. <laughs> so. In three over, a th- <laughs> God, in a three season stretch, he rushed for five thousand two hundred and ninety six yards, and rushed for forty nine touchdowns in that three year span. This is just crazy. So he's clearly one of the best running backs ever. But does it mean he's a Hall of Fame player? I mean, he's a Hall of Fame player now. Obviously, he's in the Hall of Fame, but. Yeah. I- that's such a weird one. Yep. He's you, a guy that, in my opinion, like I hate to say it, I he is one of the best running backs of all time. I'm not saying he's not. He does not deserve to be in the Hall of Fame. It's he tough. just doesn't. It's a, it's a tough one. Yeah. Like He played four probably, seasons of more than eight games. It's, it's like the, I think it's because, like, just, like, as a whole, like, he probably doesn't because he didn't play that long. But, like, the impact he made in that short time was, yeah, it like, was crazy. And he's just you know, crazy world champion. So. Like, and I don't want people to to read this the wrong way and say like just because Terrell Davis doesn't deserve to be in the Hall of Fame, in my opinion, means I don't think he's very good. No, he was like insane. I recognize him as one of the best pure running backs ever. I they tell stories about him of having like 200 yards in the first half and then getting sat for the rest of the game. Yeah, like like crazy stuff like that. Two time Super Bowl champion, Super Bowl MVP, three time Pro Bowler, three time First Team All Pro, MVP, Offensive Player of the Year twice, AFC Player of the Year. Led the NFL in rushing yards in 98. He's led the NFL in touchdowns in 96 and 98. On the 90s all-decade team. Like, he's like, the reason why John Owe is a Super Bowl champion, almost. Yeah. I mean, a big part of it. Like a a six-round draft part. pick, too. So, yeah, he, he's a weird one. But, yeah, I, um, yeah, Tony Baselli, he was good, but, like, just that time period, I think, is short. And especially with the other linemen we have here. Steve Hutchison, yeah. amazing guard. For Steve multiple Hutchinson. teams, too. Steve Hutchinson's got to be on the all-decade uh, 2000s He team. has to be. Has to be. I can't think of a better left guard in that stretch. He was so good. Yeah. Seven-time Pro Bowler, five-time first-team All-Pro, two-time second-team All-Pro, NFL 2000s all-decade team. So, Tony Baselli played for seven years. Mm-hmm. Steve Hutchinson was a Pro Bowler oh, for seven years. Yep. And five-time um, All-Pro. I think yeah, I think impressive. Steve Hutchinson should get in this year. Like I th- I think it was kind of I think he's one of the best guards. I'm trying to ever. remember last year, he was on the ballot. Are you ready? Last year. Ready I think for he was this stat, by the way? Last year, yeah, go ahead. 169 games played and started is why I think that's like that's really impressive. That's yeah. Right? I know really he's a first good. round pick, but this guy played. Um, he started every single game he played in and was healthy for a long time. I, he missed. Almost the full season in 2002, in his second year, mm-hmm. uh, played only four games. But then 
He played one, two, three, four, five, six, seven straight years starting all 16. Jeez. It, like right in a row. And then 11, 14, 12. But to stay healthy and that and that good for that long, that also is like, that's a Hall of Fame stat for offensive linemen. Like Joe Thomas, for example, he had one of the longest streaks of consecutive games started Yep. on offensive line. So yeah, listen to this. From 2007 to 2016, he did not miss a game. Started all 16, and then was injured in 2017, and then retired. But I mean, that's that's Joe Thomas is a first ballot Hall of Famer without question, without question. Oh, yeah. So, um, anyways, yeah, Steve Hutcherson should have been in it last year on his first time. He'll get mm-hmm. in this time. I th- I'm almost like I, I almost could guarantee he'll get in this time. Just insane numbers. And then the other lineman, Kevin Mawai, who's been on the ballot for a while now center so mm-hmm. you know yeah. not not the most glorious positions we're talking about but uh just real quick seventh seven time first team all pro <laughs> uh, yeah that's pretty good and he hasn't been in like he played let's see how long did he play he played for a while too mm-hmm. 15 years 16 years so kevin mawai will get close it's just center you know not the most have you seen what alan fanica looks like now I, I think we not. did like this. this I actually, you, have no, you not? No, I think we, we did this about deep this dive before. like like a month ago or, yeah. or a few months ago. Alan Fanica is listed at six five three fifteen. Yeah. I don't know how it is, but he's got to be like like five eleven, one hundred and five pounds now. Yeah, and Alan <laughs> like Fanica he, he, is another one. He's an elite runner. He doesn't look like a big monster beast anymore. He doesn't yeah. even look six five. I'm telling. It looks like he's lost. Like along with the two hundred pounds, <laughs> one hundred and fifty pounds, it looks like he's lost like five inches. You'll see. You probably see it on the screen right now. People yeah, are watching. Yeah, hopefully. hopefully, hopefully you guys. Hopefully, are. email Chaz that, and I'll remind him. Yeah. Um. But I'll Alan Fanica right also was a really good player. And when we talk about a guy that you know played forever from two thousand to two thousand ten, two thousand missed all one start. Team. Yeah, missed one start over that span. So. Um, he is a Super Bowl champion, nine-time Pro Bowler, six-time first-team All-Pro, two-time second-team All-Pro. That's, that's that very impressive. Team. Yeah, being on the All-Decade team is. Like, it means you're the best. You're the player. best in that ten-year <laughs> span. Yeah. You're the best at that position. Or, mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think Kevin Kevin Mawai may, might get left out for the two guards, but those two guards. Pr- Close. I mm-hmm. think I think Steve Hutchison should get in. Alan Fanica is close. Like Alan Fanica, it, he's it's hard really to good. Get is this out. his first year on the ballot though? Alan Fanica has been on the ballot for a while. So yeah, I think you probably gotta I probably see, gotta I, nudge I, him in at this point. Yeah, it's, it's almost 2019. Yeah. All right. What? Nope. It is 2019. It is 2019. It's almost. So he's it's been almost on the to the next decade. Four. Fourth time? Four or now? five years. Five years? I think it's five years. Um, now. He retired in 2010. So yeah. five years. No, four years. He would have been a guy that got on pretty much immediately. So. It's a great resume. Yeah. So Who else is those are, that we haven't are, talked about? So, all right, moving away Ty from Law. the non glorious positions. Ty Law. Yeah. <sighs> when we were talking about this earlier, and I, we'll go to Richard Seymour real quick before Ty Law. Yeah, all right. Richard um, Seymour, Seymour is out. I First said, person out. I said no. First person Richard out. Seymour to me is not a Hall of Fame player. No. He does have some pretty good seasons here, but he was a defensive tackle, pretty much is what he was. 3-4 D end. Like obviously he won uh, a Super Bowl with the Patriots. He won um in fact three. Uh three. He was part of the seven time Pro Bowler, three time first team all pro, which that's that is very impressive. That's kind of the metric we were using to judge offensive linemen because it's uh it's way easier. Mm-hmm. With offensive linemen, you can't like, you know, there's there's nothing we can look up here on Pro Football Reference for like sacks allowed, real quick. But I mean, Richard Seymour, the most sacks he ever had in a season was eight. He did that twice. Other yep. than that, he's recorded six was his next highest. He did that once. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and sacks does matter for him, a defensive lineman. Let's see here. He has uh, multiple seasons of forty plus tackles on the interior. Is great. Like he's a he's he's a very good player. I'm not saying he's not. This he's, is, this he's is not a Hall of Fame. Really, the Hall of Very Good. Yeah. The reason he's on the ballot, in my opinion, is three Super Bowls. Yep. And he was, that, he that was, really was a big part of that Patriots defense. 
I just don't think he's a Hall of Fame player. But yeah. very, very good player. I mean, Ty like, Law is an interesting story as well. Yeah, so Richard Seymour's first out for me from this 15. Ty Law. You have to be. Ty Law, another player on the all-decade team, I believe. Mm-hmm. Let me go look at this real quick. Yep, all-decade. Dang, he has two seasons of nine-plus interceptions. That's crazy. Yep. Let's. I wish there was uh, metrics to see how good he was, like like pro football focus. But <laughs> yeah. Because they're good at judging cornerbacks in general. So, uh, Ty Law played a while. Oh, yeah. yeah. But his main years were with New England, obviously. He is a three time Super Bowl champion. Yep. With, with the Patriots. They're a five time Pro Bowler, two time first time All Pro, or first team All Pro, excuse me, uh, two time interceptions leader, and is on that All Decades team, or yep, All Decade team. I like the two-time interception leader. I think that's a really good yeah, fun so was, stat. Was, uh, but it's I don't the one thing that like would be like uh maybe you know leave him out is like the lack of all pros, two-time all. Pro. I think that's that's because what usually it would be. what I like to look at is like at least three or four because three or four span you're dominant. But yeah. he's on the all decades team, so that kind of throws you a the all the all too. all decade team is interesting. I wonder how many cornerbacks were on that. Uh, there's four I'm looking at right now. Champ Bailey, Charles Woodson, Rondé Barber, Ty Law. Hmm. <laughs> he, okay, so of that team, okay, well, okay, okay, here. He was on the second team. Yep. First of all, there uh, are players on this list that are not Hall of Fame players. Joey yep. Porter is not a Hall of Famer, in my opinion. Yeah. Ha- Hall of very good, Sure. Mm-hmm. Like, would you say Dante Hall no. is a Hall of Famer? No, he. I know he's like special teams there, but he also. Uh, I mean, he was he was really good. He was solid. He was a receiver as well. Two time Pro Bowler, one time First Team All Pro, second team All Pro once as well. And I feel like I know he's a returner, so it's not a fair comparison. Yeah, but that's what he that's what he is for all time uh you know first team all pro and second team all pro ty law was a first time or first team all pro only twice never was even uh second team all pro Hmm. so i mean to me i wouldn't bring ty law in also and I, i know this is he played like he was really good in the 90s and in the 2000s i don't remember him at any point being a lockdown, one of the best cornerbacks in the league. He just wasn't. He wasn't really that good with the Jets, Chiefs, Jets again, or Broncos. And that was from 2005 to 2009. He was great with the Patriots early on. Yep. And then faded almost completely. Yeah, like that one really good year with the, uh, I think it was the Jets. And that was it. Yeah, in 05. And like, I do love the interceptions. Like when you have nine in a season and 10 in a season, that's awesome. But I don't think that is enough to warrant you Hall of Fame. Right. So with the with the Jets there at 31, he did have 10 interceptions. That was solid. But I mean, he fizzled out from you know that that stretch after the, after the 10 interceptions. Clearly, and he just wasn't particularly amazing. He was in like was he like the best it's, it's one of tough. the best corners when he played like for a while. But like. Not it, really. Yeah. If you're if you're only a first team All Pro twice, that means you were only one of the two best at your position twice. And the, what are we going to let everybody in the Hall of Fame? Like yeah. you know, if you were top, you know, he was a he was the eighth best CB for two years or four, or four years or five years. Like yeah, he probably shouldn't be in the Hall of Fame. The Hall of Fame is supposed to be for the greatest of the great, and Ty Law was very good, not great. You know who's a, another corner that I'm surprised isn't on this list? Another player that was on that all-decade team is Rondé Barber. I'm really surprised. Uh, retired late. Rondé Barber retired in 2012, I think. Mm-hmm. Unless, he played in. That might no, because have been he, one yeah, of his he was a semifinalist this year. I, I just looked. He was his second year as a semifinalist. Yeah, okay, at the end of the 2012 the season. Yeah, so, I mean, like he has time. Yeah, but I'm just like, oh, Rondé Barber. That's a guy where his career – is more impressive than than Ty Law. Yep, sure, that's they're both I mean. five-time Pro Bowlers, right? Yep. 
they both have won a Super Bowl. Ty Law has won two more, but that's a product of the team. But Rondé Barber, three-time first-team All-Pro, so yep. one more. But then two-time second-team All-Pro. Also is a guy that led the uh, league in interceptions for a year. Ty Law did it twice. And he's on the 2000s All-Decade team. He has 47 career interceptions. I imagine Ty Law is somewhere in the neighborhood of that. Um, uh, Ty, Ty Law Law. has 53, so a few more. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's you know what's tough. a crazy number for him though? Twenty eight mm-hmm. sacks for Rondé Barber. For Rondé Barber, yeah, he moved to safety and then probably was blitzing quite, quite more from that safety spot. Um, that's got to be more than Ty Law by I would say probably twenty. How many sacks do you think Ty Law has? Three. He has. It can't be a lot. Five. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Twenty eight <laughs> sacks is. A crazy number. Like obviously, like, yeah. Th- it's like how he played, but yeah. Ronnie Barber. Let's see. Surprised he's not out there. Two hundred and three games for Ty Law. How many did Ronnie Barber play? Ronnie Barber yeah. played two forty one. Mm. So about two seasons more. Mm-hmm. Ty Law in that stretch has eight hundred and thirty eight tackles. Ronnie Barber has twelve hundred. <laughs> so four hundred more tackles. Almost exactly. It's yeah. seven tackles short. So 400 more tackles in that span. He has 15 forced fumbles to Ty Law's seven. And then Ty Law has five more interceptions. And then more touchdowns, I think. Yep. Uh, actually, no, Rondé Barber is eight. Ty Law is seven. Um, I don't know. I, I think Rondé Barber's a Hall of Famer, just mm-hmm. right off the top of my head there. But I, That's I, I was surprised me, I didn't see him on the list. The list. Some, of it, some of it's feeling. And it's I, like, I know that's yeah. maybe not the best metric to judge is feeling. Yeah. But I don't, I don't think Ty Law's a Hall of Famer. Yeah, Patriots fans, I don't, who did, I don't, I don't are be mad at me, but I, don't, I also don't it just really doesn't strike me as a Hall of Famer. And like, is he a Hall of Famer the same year as Champ Bailey? Hell no, <laughs> no. no. So. Champ Bailey, and there's gonna be bias here because Champ Bailey is my second favorite player of all time behind Adrian Peterson, but his his numbers also back it up. Mm-hmm. Champ Bailey is a 12 time Pro Bowler. Three-time first-team All-Pro, two-time second-team All-Pro, also led the NFL under interceptions once, also NFL 2000s All-Decade team. Chad Bailey was a lockdown cornerback for a long, long time. Only four career touchdowns, 52 interceptions, right there with Ty Law. Uh, More tackles in about the same number of games, but I don't really care for tackles too much. Same number of forced fumbles. It's interesting. His numbers, Champ Bailey. Besides the all uh, first team and second time or second team All Pro, I keep saying time and team. It's very annoying to me. <laughs> um, I can't stop though. Like, but like that like, matters. The, the thing with that's, that's three more times on an, on an All Pro team. The thing with Champ Bailey too is like he didn't allow touchdowns. A touchdown. Yeah, yeah. he didn't. I wish allow... we'd see touchdowns allowed. The the do you remember that uh, AFC Championship run where the Ravens beat the Broncos? Yeah. Champ Bailey oh, did course. not allow a touchdown that entire season, and then two in that game. Yeah, that's it's, crazy. It was, like he was, he was old at that point. Champ that Bailey, twenty twelve, true lockdown, true lockdown yeah. corner, insane. Like he definitely should be. Uh, uh, he'll he'll be first ballot. Like like or like you said, those three first ballot guys, they're all getting in. Champ Bailey, Tony Gonzalez, Ed Reed. Man, I, I, like, I, I'm I'm mixed on Ty Law. I've come around a little bit. But like he's he's got like I feel like I feel like two seasons for him, like brings his entire profile up if you know what I mean. But like right. outside of those two seasons, which and I'm not saying don't count those, but I'm just saying like outside of those two seasons of 19 interceptions combined, it wasn't really an insane career. It was an insane collection of a few seasons to me, versus these other guys that had insane careers. Yep, no, I agree I with that. As far as coaches go, which you can't really talk about too much, but like Tom Flores to me is a guy that I'm shocked was not in the Hall of Fame already. Mm-hmm. I think he absolutely should have been a Hall of Fame coach. Yep. Um, I mean, he just brought that Raiders team into the forefront and is a big reason why uh, you know, like the Raiders were such a good team during that stretch. Uh, three-time Super Bowl champion as a coach. How many, how many players or how many coaches have done that? How many coaches not have a had... Lot. Three Super Bowl champions or more. Not a lot. His, Very his few. postseason record is eight and three, by the way. 
That is huh. a career head coaching record of over 700, which is pretty impressive. I wonder what Marvin Lewis is. is. <laughs> Marvin so, Lewis. I want. I just want to see the number as low as it is. His career postseason record is 0-7, <laughs> which is uh, zero. Zero. <laughs> <laughs> zero, zero, zero. See, yeah, yes. uh, Tom Flores. Yeah, it's uh, probably should be there. I think so. Let's see. Uh, then you have Don Coriel, though. When you're <laughs> like – your scheme is known. Yeah. It has a nickname. Air Coriel is there. Pretty the issue impressive. with Don Coriel, though, didn't win a Super Bowl. Did not win the Super Bowl. And that's like. It's interesting. I'm looking at this list, and it lists Tom Flores as only having two Super Bowls. I thought he had three. Tom Flores, I think he had one as an assistant. Nah. So that's what you were probably looking at. One assistant, Still, two. But he, like, who, how many coaches have two Super Bowls as a head coach? Mm. Can't be a lot. Are you ready for the list? Yeah. Okay. The list here is Bill Belichick has eight appearances and uh, a few wins in there. <laughs> Don Shula has six appearances. Tom Landry is five. This is appearances, though, more so than wins. We'll just go by wins. Yep. Belichick has five. Yep. Don Shula has two. Mm-hmm. Tom Landry has two. Uh, Bill Parcells, two. Vince Lombardi, two. Tom Flores has two wins. Jimmy Johnson, George Seifert, or Seifert, excuse me, uh, Mike Shanahan, and Tom Coughlin. Those are all the coaches with two Super Bowls, so that is uh, two Super Bowl wins. One, two, three, four, eight? five, six, seven, eight, nine. nine. Which is more than I thought, to be fair. That is a little bit more than I thought, but still, like... Tom Flores has never lost a Super Bowl. Nine, like, one of nine coaches with two Super Bowl wins. And, and think about those other names on the list who have two Super Bowl wins. Bill Parcells, Tom Landry, Don Shula. I'm looking at this. Yep. Flores, Vince Jimmy Lombardi. Johnson, and George Seifert okay. are the only ones out of those not in the Hall of Fame. And I think I think Coughlin will get in eventually. Yeah, so it's I don't know. He'll be he'll probably be dead though when it happens. <laughs> uh, that's not that's like kind of a joke, but like <laughs> I think also it's going to be true unfortunately. Yeah. But like for all that he did for the Jaguars and then yep. for the Giants beating the Patriots twice, pretty impressive. I miss Tom Coughlin as every day that goes by. <laughs> I guess I got Pat Shermer now. He's not bad. He's but like specifically when Ben McAdoo was the Giants head coach, <laughs> every day I miss Tom Coughlin yeah. more than the last. Yeah. So I think that's it, right? Oh, we missed one guy. I think that's the only guy we missed. Isaac Bruce. Um Isaac Bruce's career numbers are insane. Yes. So uh, he's in for me. So I think. So who would you put in this year, out of the Isaac Bruce? Those, oh wait, you know what? Before we get into that, we got to talk about the other guys, the the senior, the movie with Will Ferrell, in oh. the <laughs> the senior vote and the contributor. So real quick, contributor uh, Gil Brandt. Mm-hmm. I, I can't speak on whether I think he's a Hall of Famer or not. Yeah, he's a, no, just he's just a letting scout. you guys know. Who, yeah, he was a scout. Mostly with the mostly with the Cowboys. So he Scouted is responsible some for. Good players. He is responsible, maybe for uh, part of that trade with Herschel Walker that ended up securing the Cowboys dynasty. So that's fairly impressive. He's a two-time Super Bowl champion. So he yeah, had, he um, is. He had made trades to oh, select wait, players. He was, Randy he was White, done at Ed eighty. I thought, said, I thought that said ninety-eight. That is my bad. Yeah, I thought so it said it ninety-eight, bit, not eighty-eight. My bad. Yeah, a little bit before. So it, it was the earlier Super Bowls that he helped mm-hmm. out with. So that's him. Pat Bowen. So like Staubach and shit like that. Yeah. It's like, Ed, I think it said like Ed Tuttle Jones, Randy White, Tony Dorsett. Um, Pat Bowen's Broncos owner. Mm-hmm. So I, mean, I don't know. It's can't hard really for, speak for about scouts that, really. and owners, man. And then, it is. But the, the most interesting guy is the senior vote guy, Johnny Robinson, which 
I didn't know who he was. He played in the 60s, so, like, <laughs> can't blame me for that us. Yeah, but like, he had a, what did we say, seven-time All-Pro. Now, yeah. granted, he played in the AFL, mm-hmm. but I believe it's, – it's, it's tough. Yeah. First team – so he was a first-team All-Pro in 1970, and then he was first-team All-AFL, or five-time first-team All-AFL. He's you know got, what's interesting is that uh, he, he played offense and defense. Well, Ironman right there. Well, he, he okay. He played offense uh, with the Dallas Texans before they moved to Kansas City. You know what position he played? It says FL. I'm gonna guess that means flanker. Flanker, <laughs> which is uh, pretty interesting. He went to LSU, so he's listed as a DB FL halfback. <laughs> HB, so I think he I think he played he played safety for sure. He played safety. Yep. But I think that's flanker. Yep, that is flanker. He played flanker. Is the other one. Yeah, I see it. Safety On slash defense, flanker. He got a, let's see, defense here. 57 career interceptions, including two seasons with 10, another season with eight. Oh, my God, it's Ty Law. <laughs> <laughs> but, but usually with these Seniorville guys, they uh, more than more often than not, they get in. So, all right, now that we've gone over all the guys, who would you put in? Now, Minimum I'm gonna, I'm four, gonna max. I'm gonna give you. Fi- I'm gonna give you five. I'm okay. gonna give you Steve Atwater. Yep. Ooh. Oh, we didn't really we talk almost, about Steve. Atwater. We didn't talk about him at all. Okay. We need. We need to touch on Steve Atwater real quick. One of the uh, most feared safeties in NFL history, and safety is probably my my favorite position. So maybe I have a, a soft spot for it. But uh, it, it, it goes further than stats here for me with Steve Atwater. Twenty four interceptions. Nothing crazy. Um, six career forced fumbles. Nothing crazy. 1,100 tackles, almost 1,200 tackles is pretty impressive. Uh, he's also a guy that has won a Super Bowl with the Denver Broncos. And Steve Atwater, why can I not click this link? Uh, Steve Atwater, eight-time Pro Bowler, two-time first-team All-Pro, one-time second-team All-Pro. And then you say, well, Die Law isn't. To me, this is a little bit different. Uh, I know he also has a two-time Super Bowl champion. Like, Ty Law has three. Uh, is made what three more Pro Bowls in Ty Law? It was eight to five, yeah, something like that. And yeah. then has a second team All Pro. Uh, it's also a different position, which matters to me. So it's it's a lockdown cornerback versus one of the best safeties in NFL history. And I think I think Steve Atwater is one of the best safeties in NFL history. I really yeah. do. Uh, five sacks as well, and was so influential in those Super Bowl wins for the Broncos. To me, he is a Hall of Fame player. Mm-hmm. Um, even though I think Ty Law isn't right now, which that doesn't mean he can't, you know, next year. But I'm saying for this particular ballot, no, Ty Law is not to me. But I would go Steve Atwater. I would go Champ Bailey. I would go Isaac Bruce. I would go Steve Hutchinson, Tony Gonzalez. I, okay, I'll give you six. Ed Reed. We didn't talk about Ed Reed either, but that one was like pretty yeah, obvious. I mean, or Tony yeah. G. So that's six players. And I'll, I'll give you Tom Flores as a coach. Okay. And I, I don't, I, 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 don't know. You know, give a there's a senior in there, Johnny Robinson. Johnny maybe. Robinson. So that's, I guess I filled up eight in total. I think so. Yeah. But that makes the most sense to me. Ed Reed, crazy career. We didn't talk about it too much, but you don't have to. Uh, like fifteen thousand career receiving yards and ninety one touchdowns. I think that speaks for it. That's top five all time in receiving yards. Yep. You you say yours, and I'll I'll, I'll make I'll fact check that. So, for me. Champ Bailey, Tony Gonzalez, Ed Reed, automatically in for me. Maybe mm-hmm. if there was one that isn't automatic, it would be probably Champ Bailey, but like I think he's in. Isaac Bruce should be in. Steve mm-hmm. Hutchinson. And then that might honestly be it for me. Okay. Um, and then Steve Atwater. So. Yeah. And then, like, so, I mean, that's five for me. Isaac Bruce is top five all the t- uh, by the way. Randy Moss has about 60 more career receiving yards, and he's at number four all time. Isaac Bruce is at five. And it's crazy that Tony Gonzalez is even on this list, by the way, mm-hmm. at number six, for I'm saying for most receiving yards all yeah. time. The next tight end is Jason Witten at 21. <laughs> uh, also, as far as receiving touchdowns goes, Isaac Bruce is at number 12. With 91. Yeah. And then for catches, so receptions, Isaac Bruce is at 
number 13. So top five in receiving yards all time, top 15 in touchdowns and catches, Hall of Famer. Yeah, I think so. All right, so I guess that's probably going to do it, guys. Let me know how uh, your list is similar or different. And this was a lot of fun. Yeah. I think uh, this is pretty good. We'll hopefully get these to you guys once a week on the seventh round bust podcast. You know what? We might have to come back in a few days, though, because national championship. You didn't even get around to national championship. That's true. Yeah, we. we so. well, okay, well, we'll do one last thing before we go. Oh, it's you not do national it? championship. Start... Ruben Foster. Oh, maybe, maybe we'll do that in the next one. That like a little tease. Maybe, uh, yeah, Sunday, a little Sunday edition. Yeah, we'll we'll have it live on Sunday. We'll see. All right, after the playoffs. So, games. hopefully, we'll see how quick these are gonna get edited. Oh boy! All right, that's over an hour. Hope you guys enjoyed, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Take it easy.